What a doozy of a round one. Just about every favourite went down and you know there's some dramas when the dragons are at the top of the ladder for any moment of time. So if you weren't over five to start off, you just don't get rugby league, honestly. It was a pretty rough start for a lot of us out there. I missed a lot of the games over the weekend, went to see Royal Otis on Friday night, then Fred again in the Gold Coast on Saturday. So yeah, didn't get to watch as many games as I'd like, but... Did a solid 20 plus Ks of walking on the Saturday though, uh, at Fred again, because the venue was absolutely fucked. So that was a bit of a bit of head noise. But yeah, here's the recap for round one, or I guess the rest of round one in this case. So make sure you also like, subscribe, and follow on the socials as well for more NRL and sports shit talk. Um, so we go to Thursday night. The big milk touched up the Knights 28 to 12. I picked the Knights to get this one 1-12. to I thought it was always going to be a close game, probably by about four points. I thought Canberra were going to be um, a lot better than what a lot of people were giving them credit for, and boy, did they do that. They looked great across the park. Um, Zach Hosking, what a weapon, honestly. And that try that he scored, for me personally, is probably try of the week, just getting up above the pack. Bit of Lindsay Collins and that, love to see it. So he did really, really well. Um Excellent signing. Really surprised that Penrith actually let him go. He always looks so good in attack. Foggs really led the team around as well. I thought he really stood up. He kicked something like 800 metres, which is ridiculous. He was a part of everything. This meant that Strange barely touched the ball. It was almost like he was just out there on the field, honestly. Like, Foggs just went, yeah, no, ball for you, bruh. Um, it's kind of left him out there. The one touch that Strange did get that was really kind of noticeable for me, he kind of put on a bit of a step, flicked the ball out to the center and they tapped on, or was it the, it might have been Contra, whoever it was, and they got it through to Rapana after that, scored in the corners. So that was pretty solid. Knights, I don't think at any stage really looked like they were going to win, to be honest. For whatever reason as well, Ponga barely got involved. Um, yeah, not sure what was happening there. They definitely were missing his spark in the attack, I think. I think Lucas showed some serious guts as well, but by the end of it, God, he was a mess. He looked like he'd have been in a fight, honestly. Um, KPP, he was an absolute weapon out on that left edge. He's going to be a proper problem with his size and ability as well. Bit of footwork, especially with the offload as well. If they can get KP following him or somebody like that, oh, that's going to bust some teams apart. Uh, Rapata at fullback is a monster. He had a million runs, got a meat pie, and just didn't stop. And the dude's like 34 or something like that, like proper monster. Had a young might be in some hot water as well. Um, I remember KP kind of, I think it was off the off the kick, he got it. And you could see there was a bit of space that kind of opened up in the middle, and obviously KP saw that. Hit the foot Falcons straight through the gap, um, got the offload. Unfortunately, got pulled back. But yeah, Huddy Young just wiped him out after that. I think with that as well, I think at that sort of pace, it's pretty hard to stop. Not really much you can do about it. I hope they don't, you know, come down too harsh him because, yeah, I don't think there was much really happening. Like, yeah, still hit him, but, yeah, good luck trying to slow down. Like, what are you going to do? So plenty of people as well let me know that I shouldn't have gone against the milk, but honestly, they're a curse team for me. I cannot win. If I go with them, they're going to get beaten 64 to 10. Go against them, they'll do this. So I need to keep, like, a tally of my Raiders dramas this year, because honestly, I, I just cannot get it right. Friday night, so got to see most of this game as well. So Warriors, they look excellent excellent at the start. Um, thought my tip was going to come off as well. Seems like they might run away with it. They just looked amazing at the start in the attack, but Sharks managed to stick in there and managed to get away with the 16-12 win. I thought Metcalf had an impressive game. Always enjoyed watching him as well. Nico Hines, he was relatively quiet, I guess, compared to usual. Sharks looked great, though. I think both teams should have a pretty good season. Really liking the new halves pairing for the Sharks. Impressive that the Waz as well managed to sell out a third game, I think, in a row. So the two trials and then obviously this opening game. So that's massive for New Zealand Rugby League and yeah, definitely building on from what they started on last year, which is pretty cool. Two of the best sides to do it, clashing. Bally 8 keeps the streak alive. Again, fuck me with the tipping, which hurts. Low scoring with Scorm winning 8-0. to zero. Thought Penrith, if anyone, was going to be the ones that could beat him in round one. Um, and absolutely give it to them like they have the last few times that they've played, but just wasn't to be. Storm didn't really seem to miss Munster too much at all. Their defense was top tier. Peasant seems to be the goods as well and just seems to step up. Obviously, you know, it's going to be hard to kind of get that uh, Munster level player, but yeah, it seems to do the job. Looks like Taylor May had a time as well in the centers. He's definitely in for a massive year as well, pending his natural medicine, I guess, healing that he's doing. But yeah, I think he's going to be pretty good. We'll see how the storm goes moving forward, but I'm going to expect Penrith to bounce back big time. 
So after five long games of getting it so terribly wrong, the fucking Eels managed to come up with the first correct tip. Sorry, Doggies fans, but I reckon it's still going to be a bit longer for it to be your year, so I wouldn't get too excited yet. Eels got it done 26-8, and they were firing, especially Bryce Cartwright. He had a proper day out. I think he got two meat pies, just went at it. Honestly, contemplating picking them over the riff next week, given the history that they've managed to get past them the last couple games. But, yeah, I think I think that's always going to be a good game. We'll see after the team has come out what we might do there. Now, Bulldogs, Critter managed to cross for the first time being at the club. I still don't think he's going to be in the centres for too long before he takes up that fullback position. I think he's wasted in the centres in a team like that. They probably need a fullback like him. Gutho must have brought his kicking boots as well that day. Good hit out for the Eels, though. Uh, big challenge next week, uh, next week with Penrith. Another game, another tip gone down the drain, though. Checking the score after the Fred again gig after I just walked home, really rubbed things in. Dragons pumped the Titans 24, uh, sorry, 28 to 4. Who would have thought as well the Dragons were going to go back to back? Sloan getting a Hattie as well. Even Kyle Flano got a meat pie. I guess that means he's getting Maccas on the drive home for that one. Very sad for Titans fans. Not a great start considering, um, you know, there's a lot of injuries and a lot of people had picked them to have a pretty good season. Very, very early days, and like I said, a lot of big outs at this point. So, yeah, still didn't think they'd take that from the Dragons, though. So that's that's a bit rough. Scary to think that they were at the top of the ladder for a moment there. So fans already going out and getting their 2024 tattoos for Dragons fans. That's pretty wild. So last game on the Sunday as well, finally picked up another correct tip with the Cows pumping the Dolphins 43-18. They had a day out with the tries. Honestly, you could throw a dart and you'd hit an anytime try score on a ball. Like it was, yeah, everyone was picking up a meat pie. So Zach Labart, he looked impressive. He got the double and pulling off a bit of class with a real cheeky dummy as well, um, which was beautiful. Val was locked in with his goal kicking 7-for-7, seven seven, which is an unreal effort. I swear, he just kicks him straight as an arrow. It's, yeah, unreal. His kicking had a hell of a game. Definitely a good hit out for them with the opening game. We'll see how long they can actually keep this up. Um, with the points that they managed to put on, I guess that puts them at the top of the table at the moment for round one, which kind of hurts me to say. But yeah, we'll see how they go moving forward. I'm starting to question everything I know about NRL and my life choices, but we'll move on to round two, where hopefully Broncos and us can have a lot better when it comes to that. Um, Time to pretty much cry myself to sleep, though, after my uh, tipping comp performances. See you next time and have a good one.